Let's see how we can generate a new XRPL account on test network and also see how we can activate a pre-existing account on test network by of course funding it with test network coins. In previous video tutorial, we generated two XRPL addresses offline. So let's look at that. Let me copy it into a separate file. This file is not included inside our projects folder. So this is for convenience. So this is the R address. This is the secret in the form of mnemonic. This is another R address and the secret in the form of family seed and secret number. So let's use this R address and check if it's actually active on live network. This is the explorer for live network, by the way. So this account is not active on live network. So let's switch to test network. And it is also not active on test network. So now to activate it on test network, we need to send test network coins. So let's first generate a brand new account on test network. Go to this link and click on XRP faucet. So these are test network WebSocket link and JSON RPC links. We'll come to that later. And here you can find the difference between test network and dev network. We'll go with test network. Clicking on this button will generate a valid XRPL account and it also gets activated because it automatically gets a payment of 1000 XRP, which is greater than the base reserve. As of now, base reserve is 10 XRP. So if you send 10 testnet XRP to this R address, it gets activated on the test network. Whereas if you send 10 real XRP to this R address, it gets activated on the main network. So that's the difference. So this is the R address. This is the secret. This is the secret for the test network. This is the secret for the main network. It doesn't change. And coming to this balance, as of now, 10 XRP is the base reserve, which you can't send to anyone. You, you can't spend it. So the spendable balance here is 990 XRP. Also note that every activated XRPL account has a sequence number, either be it on testnet, dev network or main network. And this sequence number increments by one for each validated transaction, except for tickets, which reserves these sequence numbers. But that's for another video. As of now, just know that every validated transaction from this address increments the sequence number by one. This is to avoid double spending. And that's for another topic too. But where does this initial sequence number come from? Do you think it's random? It's not. If you remember previous video, every transaction enters into a ledger and every ledger is identified by unique ledger index. So this is the ledger index where this transaction happened, which activated this XRPL account. So let me show that in action so that it's more clear. So let me split the screen and let's switch to the home page here. So these are the ledger indexes. I'll click generate test network and look at this. So this got this transaction wherein this XRPL account got activated by payment transaction is here. So this is the sequence number. So let's click this ledger sequence number or ledger index and check if this payment of 1000 XRP actually happened here. As you can see, 1000 XRP got transferred to this R address inside this ledger index. So this ledger index is assigned as initial sequence number to this XRPL account. And for each transaction, validated transaction, which happens from this XRPL account, the sequence number increments by one. That is to avoid double spending, by the way. So now let's check if this R address is actually active on test network. So let me copy this address and paste it in this explorer. Let me expand it. So as you can see, it has 1000 XRP. It's showing because it's active on test network of which 10 XRP is the base reserve. Now let's import this account into sum. So let's see if we are on test network, go to advance. We are already on the test network, but if you wish, you can switch to ripples test network. 
which is present here, but it doesn't matter. You need to be on test network. That's the requirement because this account has got activated on test network and not on the main network. Okay. So now go to the settings, click on accounts and add account. We need to import an existing account with full access because we have the secret. So it's full access. The secret starts with S it's that's why it's family seed. I'll just copy and paste it here and click next, which derives the public address. We saw how to derive it in our previous video. So this derives the R address. We will give an unique name to it so that we identify this R address. I'll call it XRPL course. So this is how we import an account into sum. So let's check if it's imported, go to accounts and here we have full access account. And let's click on this explain link. The balance is 1000 XRP of which 10 XRP is account reserve. So spendable balance is 990 XRP. Now let's activate this account. We generated it in our previous video. We just make a transaction that is payment of 10 XRP or more to activate it. I'll send 15 XRP of which 10 XRP will be base reserve. So let me paste the R address here. And some actually notices that this is the first time we are using this account and 10 XRP will go to activate this account and the spendable balance will only be 5 XRP and it wants the user. If you want to continue, click continue. There is another thing called memo. This is public memo. So the assignment is, I have typed a memo here. Just go look for it on the ledger. Go to the explorer, find this transaction and look for this memo. So once this transaction is successful, the R address gets activated. Let me copy this and check if it's active. So this explorer is for mainnet. So let's switch for test network. And as you can see, it's activated. It has 15 XRP of which 10 XRP is base reserve. This transaction to activate this account got included in this ledger index. So this initial sequence number has been assigned to it. So this address is active on test network now and throughout the course, we will be using this address.